Welcome to the world of tomorrow! I mean, the D-list! The show where I list things and my name begins with a D! Of tomorrow! So apparently Futurama's coming back. Again. As the show itself posited, it just won't stay dead. I have... mixed feelings? Look, I love Futurama. It's one of my top two favorite cult TV comedies with the voice of Billy West and a character named Philip Fry. Today on Phil Fry the Science Guy, Woo-hoo! Phil teaches us all about grass. Woo! And last time the show was revived, it led to some of my favorite episodes of the entire series. On paper, more Futurama sounds great. But on the other hand, how many more times must I watch this show get canceled? How many more times must I bid farewell to the Planet Express crew? I've done it so many times already, I don't know how many more I can take. I don't know, I want to be optimistic. I hope the new Futurama is great. I hope we get some all-time classic episodes coming our way. But before I can look ahead at new Futurama, I must first look back at all the other times I had to say goodbye to Futurama. So today I am ranking every episode that at one point or another seemed like it would be the final Futurama episode ever produced, regardless of what show it's an episode of. I'm not including video games or comic books because I never follow them that closely and I don't have time to do that much research this month. And I'm not including any of the times that Futurama characters made just cameos and other things during its many cancellations, like that Inconvenient Truth trailer with Bender or that Duck Dodger short with Zoidberg. For it to count for this list, it has to be a narrative that focuses on Futurama characters, and it has to have been written with the assumption that it might be the last one. It doesn't have to have been a Futurama episode, but it has to be a Futurama episode. Does that make sense? It'll make sense when you see all the entries. Also, this might go without saying, but fair warning, I will be getting into spoilers for all of these. So if you've been putting off binging Futurama, you can watch this video after you do that. Trust me, it's worth experiencing these episodes going in fresh. But for the probably most of my audience that's already seen every Futurama episode multiple times, let's get to ranking. Number six, Overclockwise. Qbert overclocks Bender to help him beat Mom's sons at video games, thus violating his warranty. This causes trouble for the entire Planet Express crew. What did I teach you about tinkering with machinery? How? You taught me how. Meanwhile, Leela feels uncertainty about the future of her relationship with Fry. I mean, if we were together, where would we be ten years from now? Still here? Definitely. Or somewhere else. The first of the Comedy Central seasons was written before the show was definitely renewed for a second Comedy Central season, and the writers seemed reasonably certain that Comedy Central wouldn't bring them back for only one season, but just in case, they wrote this to be ambiguously final. But this is supposed to be watched as, you know, maybe a one of our many last episodes of Future <laughs> We've had a lot of those. As David said at the table read, it has everything that you'd come to expect from a Futurama series finale episode. <laughs> as a result, this is a really fun episode, but it's not a great finale. The only finale-esque elements to the story are the speculation that Bender and Leela might be gone forever and Planet Express might be going out of business, but I feel like Planet Express is constantly on the verge of going out of business, so even that doesn't feel very final. The final scene of the episode is a really good season finale scene. I like that a lot. But also, this episode isn't even really the season finale because reincarnation came afterward. And reincarnation is certainly a great title for a potential series finale of a show that keeps coming back. But since that's a Tales of Interest or Treehouse of Horror style anthology episode, it doesn't really count as the final Futurama story of the season. Also, this one ends where it says level over, but originally you had the uh, series over. That's right. This yeah, this one used to be the third segment. We thought it might be the last episode ever. So yeah, the joke at the end was instead of game over, series over, which made us laugh in a yeah. sad way. In a sad way. Again, I'm not knocking either one of these episodes. I like them both a lot. But if these had been the final episodes of Futurama, I think that would have been pretty disappointing. Fortunately, we still had more time with the gang, so this didn't have to be goodbye. 
Number five, Radio Rama. Okay, there's a chance that even those of you who have watched the whole show multiple times never came across this one, so I won't get too spoilery with this, I'll just give you the broad strokes. To promote the mobile game Worlds of Tomorrow, a very special audio episode of Futurama was produced for the podcast that, at the time, was known as Nerdist. This was very exciting at the time because it was before Chris Hardwick was accused of being abusive. Coming to you direct from the 31st century, it's Futurama, the show that never dies, but is so sick it lost its video. In classic Futurama meta fashion, the plot involves All My Circuits coming back as a podcast since Calculon's voice box survived his multiple deaths, apparently. Hey, Bender, you're here too! Weren't you on All My Circuits once? Bite my shiny metal ass! <laughs> And yes, Amy, I was. Meanwhile, Fry built a digital 3D sculpture of himself for Leela, but she's so offended at him forgetting about her lack of death perception that she dumps him again. This seems like a really low stakes reason to break up after the stuff they went through in the other finales, but I'm guessing the idea here was to do something that might happen in a classic episode of Futurama, so fine. That's it. Our on-again, off-again relationship is officially off. Again? Permanently. When they dump the sculpture on the digital garbage planet, Bender steals something that looks valuable. That thing turns out to be Klaxon, a vicious being made up of unheard podcast episodes, voiced by Hardwick. And remember, when you hear the strange noise, <laughs> that's your reminder that Bender has a mysterious digital file from space in his chest cavity. Look, if you can't get past the Hardwick of it all, I don't blame you at all. But if you can, there's a lot of fun in this episode. The audio format gives the writers a chance to play with new jokes that they couldn't do in animation. What a magnificent nude sculpture of Fry. Nude? You can see every tiny detail, even his penis. It can only be described as a quasi-erotic masterpiece of three-dimensional meta-representationalism. And we finally learn the name of the Tales of Interest narrator. The audience was treated to the dulcet tones of the All My Circuits announcer, who happened to be yours truly, Don Cunningham. Let's hear what I sounded like. Hi, this is your announcer, Don Cunningham. That said, this thing probably has a bit too much plot for an audio-only one-off. There's a thread about Bender's mother dying of planned obsolescence, which is a very funny joke that feels like it could fuel a classic episode of Futurama. But the gag isn't really expanded upon, and that storyline takes a shift to going for emotional gravitas, and the shift is a lot clunkier than similar tone jugglings in earlier episodes of Futurama. Mommy, I'm scared. As Bender's ass chattered nervously, his mother reached out and gave him a reassuring squeeze on the shoulder with her vice-like gripper. But it's great to hear all the characters again in a fun adventure. And it showed another way these characters could live on. Which ended up being a moot point since they're just bringing them back in animation again. Number 4. Into the Wild Green Yonder the first Futurama revival was a series of four direct-to-DVD movies, each of which could be split into four-part episodes in syndication. And the final of these four was Into the Wild Green Yonder. After a mysterious cold open, we go to Mars Vegas, promisingly enough with Seth MacFarlane doing what he does best, crooning and not writing. Cause we'll still find the happening hot spots We'll still cruise the cool casinos You'll still fly me to the moon Although the moon to which you fly me could be Phobos or Demos But Vegas is being demolished and rebuilt by Leo Wong Who is not the most comfortable character So it's rough spending so much time with him in this movie But hey, it was a different time in 2009 Anyway, the latest member of the Waterfall family is protesting, and one thing leads to another, and as a result, Fry can start reading minds, but his past nastification prevents anyone from being able to read his mind, and he joins a secret society to protect humanity, and meanwhile, Leela is a fugitive, and also because these movies were meant to be split into episodes, there's a whole bunch of other subplots going on. 
It's a lot to keep track of, and while all four of these movies are a lot of fun, they work better structurally split into episodes than they do as movies. But as a potential last hurrah, they really strive to go all out for this one, with nearly every character from the show's run making an appearance, however brief, and equal weight paid to the universe-defining stakes and the interpersonal emotional stakes. And you probably think what I'm doing is wrong, but it's something I really care about. You don't have to explain, Leela. You're you. That's all I need to know. And while it's not my favorite final Futurama story, I think it might have my favorite final Futurama scene. I love you, Leela. Maybe I waited too long to say this, but I love you too. Wormhole! Sweet topology of cosmology! It's huge! Of course, it was designed to have the option of not being final, but back when it was looking like this would be the final Futurama scene, I found it satisfying enough to make up for any unevenness I felt in the rest of the movie. It made me hopeful for more adventures, but ready to say goodbye if necessary, and that's a really impressive balancing act. Number 3. Simpsorama one year after the then-most-recent series finale of Futurama aired, Bart Simpson's time capsule shenanigans lead Bender to come back in time on a vital mission. To kill Homer Simpson! <gasps> My ears are burning. Not yet, but they will be! <laughs> ah, a boxing glove! But when this mission doesn't work, the rest of the Planet Express crew go back in time to modern-day Springfield to get to the bottom of things, and then the Simpsons have to come to the future. <laughs> Dad, we have beer in our time. Hey, I haven't had a drink in a thousand years! Now, technically, this is not the first Simpsons Futurama crossover. There have been multiple Futurama cameos in Simpsons stuff. Bender made a cameo in the Flash Forward episode Future Drama, which may or may not have been canon, and Bender and Zoidberg make very fourth Wally cameos in the 2007 Simpsons game as part of the Matt Groening boss fight. Violet, engage the super tuned defense systems. Yes, Mr. Groening. It's graining. Are you sure? No. But the big crossover long before this were the comic books, which, like I said, I never followed super closely, but I skimmed through the Simpsons Futurama crossovers, and I noted that the writers of those bent over backwards to justify how they could share a universe when The Simpsons was established as a fictional show within the Futurama universe. Some Bart Simpson dolls! <laughs> My shorts. Okay. Mmm, shorts. Which seems like an odd thing to worry about because The Simpsons is a fictional show within The Simpsons universe. If you start building a balloon for every flash in a pan cartoon character, you turn the parade into a farce. But for this episode, which is theoretically actually canon with both shows, they don't bother with that. Futurama is just set in the future of The Simpsons world. It's possible that the appearance of Kang and Kodos at the end is supposed to hint that this is a non-canonical episode, but the more likely scenario is they just remember that they've always worked off the mantra of following continuity only when that's funnier than ignoring it. Time machines are physical impossibilities. We teleported through a singularity that I quantum entangled to Bender under the guise of fixing his collar. Yes, but how did Bender get here? With a time machine. But you just said that- Samples ready! And that disregard for continuity is great for comedy, less great for emotion. Since Fry is reduced to a supporting character in this story, he never gets a moment to revel in the fact that he's back in the 21st century. And he never even considers trying to see his family, which, I mean, fine, but after Game of Tones, it feels inauthentic for him to not even think about trying to see his mom again. Also, this is a cruel gut punch. That's just heartless. Also, I guess for this episode, Springfield is within walking distance of New York City. Not any wilder than any other clue about Springfield's location they've ever given. Ohio, Nevada, Maine, and Kentucky. But the point here is just to have one last wacky adventure with the Planet Express gang viewed through the lens of the Simpsons gang. It's like a reverse backdoor pilot, a backdoor reunion. It doesn't really advance the Futurama storylines or characters that much, other than apparently leaving Scruffy without a head, but it's nice to see them all again. Kill all humans. 
kill all humans. Start with Flanders. Story with Flanders. While touted as a Simpsons Futurama crossover, this episode is really more of a Bender and Homer crossover with cameos from everyone else. Hello, Robert. Looks like everyone gets a turn to say something. This concludes my turn. And unsurprisingly, this episode goes hard on the meta jokes. You know, they look a little similar. Yeah, like the guy who designed Bender just took a drawing of Dad and stuck an antenna on it. See, I used to think that too before we actually saw Bender in human form. Take Homer and explore this time period. Find out why people would ever pay for freemium games. I'm assuming this was a little meta joke about how both of these shows have their own freemium games, since elsewhere this episode makes one of the very few references I remember The Simpsons ever making to one of their other famous advertising campaigns. Attention goblins! Madison Cube Garden is filled with Butterfinger bars, and people are laying fingers all over them! <laughs> Also, you know I appreciate this joke. I thought people in the future would be more full of peace and love, like an Epcot Center. In our time, Epcot Center is a work farm for the weak. Oh, but it's not as crowded as the slave labor camps at Universal Studios. This is a pretty good Simpsons and Futurama episode, and it's nice to see everyone again, but I don't think the episode has quite enough fun with the crossover to really justify its existence as a crossover. I feel like this easily could have been fleshed out into an hour-long episode, really giving the character interactions room to breathe. And to make matters worse, the episode was overshadowed by the Simpsons Family Guy crossover, which aired earlier that season and stretched about a half hour worth of crossover into an hour. Come on, Fox, there's plenty of chances for Family Guy to visit Springfield, but how many more chances are we going to get to visit the world of Futurama? Well, apparently more than we realized, but come on! Number two, the devil's hands are idle playthings. Fry wants to impress Leela, and he once again takes up the holophoner, which is apparently a more commonly played instrument than we previously thought. A holophoner? Only a few people in the whole universe can play that, and they're not very good at it. And apparently they're all children in New New York. Wow. Your kid is great. How hard did you say you had to hit him? Well, fairly hard. I guess these kids could only get here through whiplash techniques. Unfortunately, Fry is not up to snuff, so he and Bender go and get help from the star of the show's first big musical number. I'll merely pick a robot at random from somewhere in the universe, probably one you've never even met, and then I'll remove his hands and switch them for yours. And in an uncharacteristically lucky moment, Fry gets the better end of a Faustian bargain. At last I have the power to make Leela love me. Oh, sorry, that'll wear off in a couple of days. I can't believe a Matt Groening character voiced by Dan Castellaneta would be inclined to strangling. Who is this one-eyed female baby Moses with courage in her female baby smile? Look, as far as I'm concerned, every TV show would be better if it was a musical, so I really appreciate such an operatic climax to this episode. You guys should consider what Disney does and, and, and actually mount this on stage in Broadway. Hey, Disney owns you now, so what's stopping them? At least they could put it up at the Hyperion. I can't imagine that one drawing of Bender at Krusty Burger gave Universal full control over the Futurama theme park rights. Oh, but it's not as crowded as the slave labor camps at Universal Studios. At the time this episode was being written, the fate of Futurama was up in the air, but the staff all had a sinking feeling that this would probably be the last one. Did we think this might be the last episode of the series when we wrote it? And the answer is, we did, yes. We thought we thought there was a, probably about a 50-50 chance, so we kind of wanted to hedge our bets and not have everyone literally wave goodbye at the end, but to, to at least go out on a sweet note that you would, you would feel good about yourself. And considering they weren't 100% sure that it was the finale, it's remarkable how beloved a finale it is. And I think it all comes back to that final line. Please don't stop playing, Fry. I want to hear how it ends. A final line that they had to spend a lot of time to get just right. It took about six months for us to record the very last line of this show and the last line of the series. So literally for, for months and months, there was one line of the series that needed to be recorded. But uh, 
due to Fox's tremendous delays in airing the show, it proved to not be any sort of a problem at all. But here's my hot take. As much as I love this episode, I don't think this is even the best finale from this season. See, the thing I really remember sticking with me when I watched through the Volume 4 DVD set was that there are a lot of episodes that have really emotional or uplifting or finale-feeling endings. You're my parents! All I've ever wanted is to know you! This is the happiest moment of my life! I don't care if you're not the most important person in the universe. It really makes me happy to see you right now. Then I am the most important person in the universe. So, um, Leela, seeing how the universe wasn't destroyed, you want to catch an ape fight? You know, together? Well, I guess you deserve one more flip. So, heads or tails? You know, let's just say it's heads. And the staff knew that Fox had a habit of airing episodes out of order, so I feel like they wrote a lot of these episodes to be potentially conclusive just in case any one of them was the last episode ever shown. Boy, thank God they didn't air Jurassic Bark last. But if you ask me, the episode in the season that would have made the best finale? The Sting. For all we know, they could air this episode last and people would actually think that it was uh, the final episode. We could just cut out the special, the, you know, the twist ending and let, yeah, <laughs> just let Fry die. Let Fry be dead. In The Sting, Leela blames herself for Fry's death by Space Bee, but when she seems to be receiving messages from Fry, she wants to find out if he's still alive somewhere or if she's just going crazy. It's an episode with an incredible scope, surreal moments, and the sweetest ending. More importantly, for me, in the entire run of the Fry Leela relationship, this is the one episode that made me believe that Leela would start to fall in love with Fry too. Out of all the episodes in this season, this is the one that I think would have made the most satisfying finale. But it didn't end up being the final season anyway, so it's a moot point. And my number one favorite Futurama finale is the final finale not counting those reunion episodes on that podcast and on The Simpsons. I'm talking about Meanwhile. Fry and Leela return to the site of their first delivery together, but it almost ends in Leela's death. Fry doesn't want to take another moment with Leela for granted, so he's finally going to propose, and he steals Farnsworth's new time button to make the moment last forever. It backfires. What happened? Did I break the button? I think you broke the universe! Everything but us is frozen! The result is basically a Futurama Twilight Zone episode, that's distinct from all those Scary Door episodes, and yet it's a weirdly uplifting one. Despite not having a world as we know it anymore, Fry and Leela have each other, and that's all they need for a long, happy life of isolation. That's really romantic. It was a good life. Kinda lonely though, maybe? I was never lonely. Not even for a minute. It would have been bold to end the series right here. Make this the definitive ending of not just the show, but the entire Futurama universe. But of course they gave themselves an out, although one with some ambiguity. I've modded the device to release a single huge anti-chroniton blast. It should rip us out of stasis back to the instant before I conceived of the time button. You mean we'll all get to live our lives over again? Of course. We won't remember anything that's happened. So it's ambiguous when he conceived of the time button, and if they're going back without their memories, it's ambiguous if he will once again think of the time button and everyone will make the same mistakes again. And what's more, when this episode originally aired, they reran the Futurama pilot right after it, which led a lot of fans to assume that the reset put the whole gang in an infinite loop of reliving the entire series start to finish all over again. That would have been an interesting note of sweetness in the face of futility. Fry and Leela are trapped reliving these lives forever, but they think it's worth it because they have each other. That's half depressing, half romantic. What do you say? Want to go around again? I do. But since after this episode came the Simpsons episode, the Nerdist episode, and the upcoming revival, the more likely scenario is they go back to the beginning of this episode, never use a time button, and just continue on forgetting they were ever married. That's ultimately less bleak, but also simultaneously kinda less hopeful. 
it's kind of heartbreaking that they lose the memories of this life together, but it's nice they have a new life together. I don't know. Either interpretation is uh, kind of bittersweet, but in a really nice way. But even without the ambiguity, this is a perfect finale, and I just don't know how they're going to top it next time. Well, let's be real, it's a moot point, they're just never gonna end TV shows anymore. Every show gets infinite lives now, finales will never actually be final. I'm so tired. But that's my ranking of the Futurama finales so far. What about you? Which ending was your favorite? Are you excited for more Futurama, or should they have quit while they were ahead in a jar? Let's discuss this all in the comments, and until next time, this is Dave, signing off.